Hello everybody and welcome to this week's episode of Nether War Freaky Pharaoh Day. Thank you for joining us for your weekly dose of superhero shenanigans. My name is Alex and I will continue to be your humble game master for this series. Tonight we are playing Mutants and Masterminds, the world's greatest superhero RPG, just produced by Green Running Publishing. It is a D20 system that allows players to create their own unique or iconic superheroes with enough crunch in the rules for folks who are into that sort of thing. It also features hero points, which are a special resource players can use to empower their heroes when the going gets tough. Heroes can take additional actions, increase their speed or strength for a turn, edit the scene for when they desperately need something to throw at a bad guy or some wild tool that they've remembered to pick up or happens to be left around, and allows heroes to use their powers in creative ways. Uh, they're earned through good role-playing, vivid descriptions, jokes I think are funny, and from you, the audience. If you follow, subscribe, or donate bits during the stream, you are given a hero point that you can give to the hero or game master of your choice. And Jonesy just resubscribed again. He's on a 19-month streak. Point for the table, according to chat. So that's another thing you can do, is you can just leave a point out and somebody can use it whenever they want to. Uh, we have gathered some mixed-matched heroes tonight. Say, huh, heroes? Uh, uh, heroes. heroes. <laughs> Uh, I want to give everyone a chance to tell us a little bit about themselves, the character they will be playing, where else we can find them, and have them answer my question of the day, which is, if you could trade lives with someone for 24 hours, who would you choose? Andy, is going first. I'm going first. Andy's going first. All right. Well, hi, I'm Andy. I'm here on Monday nights for our Nether War series. You can also find me over on our YouTube channel, where I'm the host of our StoryForge series. You can also find me over on our website, where I write blog posts when... I can actually think of a topic that needs to be written about, which has been a while. Uh, tonight, I am not playing Resident, our Resident Jim Mage. I am body swapped into Bowman. So I get to be the awesome archer with the amazing era, array of trick arrows. Uh, that was a lot of alliteration. Yep, I'm fairly certain <laughs> that's what Calvin same. does. <laughs> well, you didn't uh, say it like this. I've never noticed that before. <laughs> <laughs> so for the question of the day uh i would probably take like put me into give me elon musk so i can figure out if any of his ideas are actually worth you know, investing in and then continue and then just pump money into the ones that are good and give away three quarters of his uh earnings so that you know people don't need to work as hard for it. and we'll go cat Ooh, backwards <laughs> <Spicy>. mm -hmm. <laughs> um hi my name's cat tonight i'm playing overdrive surprise um that's gonna be fun about me i'm sorry if i sound or i'm a little rough today i'm tired from my first full day at classes and i'm also recovering from food poisoning yesterday so life has not been kind to me <laughs> in the past few days um as for the question of the day um i told them this earlier but i'm pretty sure i would pick jeff bezos and i would just like send like a fraction of his money just to like myself and like the people I love so that but I would do it like right before the 24 hours is up too so that he can't use any of it in my body because you know he'd buy like a yacht or something and that would just ruin my day um so yeah I would do that and then yeah so Jonesy hi everybody uh, I am Jonesy and tonight uh, I will be playing Mortis uh, I am mm -hmm. back in my character is back in his normal body, uh, <clears throat> whereas everyone else is body swapped. Um, and uh, he is our resident in necromancer and guardian of the of the uh, crossroads. Uh, I will, as far as body swapping, uh, I don't know. My my gut is telling me any incompetent person in, in the Senate and or Congress, just so I can either tried to make them less com incompetent or I can resign right before the 24 hours is up and get <laughs> get them I, out of office. I think option A would take more than 24 hours. Mm. <laughs> True. There's a certain uh, specific uh, Democrat who doesn't act like a Democrat and blocks everything. 
uh, Sunday that comes to mind. So, but anyway, uh, with that, I will turn it over to Kevin. Hi, I'm Kevin. I am playing Resonant this evening. Um, you know, I'm here Monday nights, but there's lots of great stuff when I'm not here. So, you know, be sure to stick around the channel for that. If I could buy stop myself with anyone, it would be the copy of Resonant character sheet so I could play my character for the next four hours, three hours. <laughs> I, I, I have Overdrive and copy of Overdrive, Alex, but I don't have copy of Resonant on my raw stare. Well, I can fix that. Uh, who would I trade places with? I don't know. Bob Saget, his can... problems are over. Oh, that was too dark too soon. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought about <laughs> saying some shit like that, though. <laughs> That's what I'm here for, to say the shit you shouldn't. That's what I do. That's my job. This is everyone's social studies teacher. <laughs> yes, keeping it dark in the social studies. Um, I don't know. That's a god awful question. I mean, if I thought highly of real people, I wouldn't invest so much time in role playing games, right? True that. I don't know. I want to be. I don't know. The guy at the beach who tries to sell you pictures, even though everyone has a camera in their phone now, like. There's a feudal. There's a guy whose life is utterly feudal, but he doesn't care. He's still going out with gusto. That's somebody I want to be <laughs> for a day. Over to you, Calvin. Okay. Well, yeah. How do you follow that shit show? I know, right? <laughs> I do not know, but I will try. <laughs> so, hey everyone, I'm Calvin. Uh, normally, I would be playing Bowman, the awesome archer with an incredible array of arrows. I think is the thing that I say. But today, <laughs> I have body swapped into Boom Mortis. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> now um, two of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be getting out of hand. Uh, of all course, episode, I'm here. just went all episode one on you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, usually here every Monday, and also doing occasional one shots here. But I'm also over on the Win with Dice channel over on YouTube, where we have a bunch of gaming streams every week. Uh, GM podcasts every week, a whole bunch of cool stuff if you're into tabletop gaming and video gaming. Uh, as for the question of the day, who would I trade bodies with? I mean, I was trying to think of another incredibly wealthy person so I could do some more sudden explosive wealth distribution. I was kind of landing on Zuckerberg, but honestly, I just want to make the metaverse thing super weird. Because every time I see it, it's just like meetings in a low poly version of yourself. I want to have like where where's all the like what? like uh shoot what was that book that was uh like just like nostalgia into a movie like with the Iron Giant Ready Player One yeah, yeah. Mm. I want that <laughs> okay see Kevin I think what you're talking about is the Trojan Horse I'm pretty sure the metaverse is going to be fucking weird as shit but like yeah well, I want to be weird Zuck now can't sell it that way I want it to be weird now. Oh, uh, don't you worry. I have this gut feeling that it's going to be weird. Oh, we're getting weird. One. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I don't have the patience. I wanted to start there and then see where it goes. <laughs> That's amazing. And I guess I'll pass it back to Alex. Hi, everybody. I'm Alex. And my answer to the question, I would like to be Kevin Feige for a day, just so I know exactly what's going to be happening in the MCU for the next 20 years. Or Mitch McConnell, so I can accidentally wander into a ring of bottle holders. <laughs> and accidentally suffocate like the turtle that he is. <laughs> oh, you're talking about like the... <laughs> the like little, the, the can... The six-pack rings, I'm like... Yeah, six-pack rings, that's the word. Bottle holders. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. is there, did something happen this week that I missed? Like, was there more shenanigans at Harry Reid's funeral, or uh, uh, I, I didn't catch on to? Like, what what is happening? Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think without further ado, we're probably going to go ahead and get started. Maybe. All right. Um. So. Oh, here's a fun thing. I learned I've been spelling a do wrong <laughs> for every one of my outlines. How were you spelling it? As adieu, A D I E U, instead of A D O. Even though I was in the play Much Ado About Nothing. So. Oh, see, uh, I thought you were talking the French adieu. Yep. I thought that was the idiom, but apparently it's not. Mm. Oh. I didn't know either. Well, last time on Nether War, our heroes fought a major battle for the fate of Lafondi. 
We jump straight into General Costa's siege of the Resistance Camp, which was a major fight that not everyone survived. Overdrive opened the battle by rescuing Resident's mom from the General's clutches. Everyone waded into the hundreds of soldiers, dealing as much damage as possible. Resident appealed to her people, begging them to lay down their arms, a tactic that had some effect on the soldiers. And Centuria found herself attacked by Shadavan Steelguard, one of Omega's chief Terminus lieutenants. She used her status as Master Mage to burn away Una's control of him, taking him out of the fight. And at the end of it, turning him into a possible asset for her to use in the Terminus for whatever Cat has planned that I have no idea what's going to be happening. I don't know. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, there were some casualties. Rar threw himself in front of General Acosta's powerful anti-magic weapon and was annihilated. The Cloak of Flight suffered a similar fate, causing Resonant to unleash her greatest power on her uncle's army, dropping almost every remaining soldier in a burst of magical energy. Uh, General Acosta answered her order to stand down by killing Ori with his crystal rapier. Then the heroes took him down hard. After the battle, Resonant used her gift to resurrect Ori, but the others remained gone. Um, Mortis checked with his soul sight, but realized that they were not dead, they were obliterated. They have gone to where things go when they no longer exist, rather than to any sort of specific afterlife. Um, Overdrive realized that Acosta was only a drone, and discussed with Mortis about what they should tell Resonant. Eventually, the group did tell Resonant, and they decided to head back. They needed to head back to Earth Prime to stop Una. Uh, Resident's mother and Boreal let Gemma know that they had to shut the portal to Lafondi behind her. Gemma has decided to stay with Freedom Week Dark in the hopes that someday she could find another way home after they stop Una and save the multiverse. However, our story tonight is going to begin a couple of weeks ago when this group, Group A, left to go to Lafondi. Another group of our Freedom Week Dark heroes began making their way towards Ferroburg, which is where we rejoin everybody in their new bodies, except for Mortis. In the Nereid Nexus. Well, this is weird. Tell me about it. Yeah. Yeah, this magic stuff always, uh, well, I Maybe I should adjust to it now. I don't know. But we still have a situation to deal with. So while our other selves are dealing with their current threat, uh, what do we have? Well, Mortis, you wanted us to head to Nick, right? See if we couldn't find him. That's my hope. Um, like I said, he's... I mean, he, he can leave normally, uh, but just doesn't. So, and like I said, there was definitely signs of a struggle. Something had gone, someone had attacked him at the house. Um, and knowing that my father-in-law is now free on the loose. Or my soon-to-be father-in-law. So do you think it's a good idea to go back to your place to see what clues we can dig up? Or do you have <clears> something I, else in mind? That'd be a good place for us to start. I mean, my, my, my gut is telling me, you know, if, my, if Nick's father's involved, then he's probably going back to his own stomping ground, um, at least, you know, away from you know, where Daedalus and <laughs> Johnny Rocket and us can all reach him relatively easily. But... Um, As Mortis looked around for Bowman and trying to figure out which body Bowman's in. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but, Over here. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey, that was creepy. <laughs> uh, you're definitely much more of the investigator than I. There may be clues I overlooked. Uh, my, my, my guess is telling me my, my father-in-law, but my list of enemies is long. And yeah. I think your first guess is pretty good, but I... It's worth looking into, unless there's some spell that we can do, some locator thing between the three of us now. I don't know if that would be faster with our hands, with everyone, uh, with our... <laughs> I don't know if that would be faster with all of us working together on it than my usual methods. 
I also don't have my utility belt, so. I'm. It's right here. <laughs> <laughs> just, be, just because you're not wearing it doesn't mean it's not here. Andy, I'm giving you a hero point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I guess let's get to investigating. See if we can pick up some sort of trail, either magically or in, with an investigation of some sort. Yeah. I'm going to head someone who could like, detect magical energy and stuff. That, that's you. Oh, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not my body. Okay, do we need to figure out who's in whom right now <laughs> if you watch uh, city of destiny you know it's a very different question on that show <laughs> wow <laughs> wow <laughs> um, um, um. that's wow. the context i was actually laughing at originally <laughs> so much city much after dark <laughs> like, do, do, do we need to start uh do we need to start city of destiny after hours Wait, it's kind what? of already that. <laughs> okay. Um. Then do I need to like speed wake us over there or something? Don't know how to that, do that. Uh, sure. How does that work? <laughs> she doesn't know where overdrive is, so she just looks. Uh, At everybody. You, you... <laughs> Which one of us is supposed to be overdrive? <laughs> uh, I'm a Centuria. <laughs> yeah, you just you you run and you 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 uh, tap into the wellspring and then you just like sort of there's this I don't know. <laughs> What's funny is we don't know if that's Dave talking in Resonant's body or Resonant just being an expert on everything. <laughs> um. um okay yeah hold on give me one second i'm gonna is, the first is... few steps she takes are just like a jog like she's not she doesn't know how to move her legs fast yet and then she's like oh wait hold on let me try it again and then she like sort of zips around okay i think i can do it guys is Saul here uh, no, Sala's not here. Sala's in the house. Sala is here. He's just the yeah, house. The house is oh, here in Sala's oh. body. Were we, were we leaving someone here? Wasn't there someone else with us? Or am I just thinking of ancient animals? Medea. Right. I think Medea was with us, right? Yes. And yeah, I think she, was, she was the one that you guys volunteered to leave to watch the house to make sure mm. everything was going to be okay. <laughs> Yes, because I think I re recall as resonant basically saying, you know, don't do anything too crazy while we're gone. And Sala's trapped in the house somewhere. Sala's trapped as the house. Well, mm -hmm. I want to rummage around and see if I can find, um, like, a roll of duct tape or something in a Sharpie. You can definitely find something like that. So I'm going to tear off a piece of duct tape and write Centuria on it and walk over to the appropriate body and slap it on <laughs> the on the shoulder. Uh, I'm going to basically give everyone name tags so we know who's who. Hello, my name is Centuria. Awesome. This actually does help. Okay, uh, Centuria, speed wake us out of here. <laughs> Please. Okay. Yep. Then I'll, I'll do that, Alex. <laughs> you sure will. <laughs> um, everybody is taken very quickly with Centuria to Nick's house. I want everybody to roll a dodge save as they come out of the speed wake. Rude. <laughs> <laughs> Including me? No, nah, no. Nah. Twenty twenty-three. I assume 25. we use our swap stats for this. Yes, use your swap stats for for physical activity. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Uh, still getting used to this body, I guess. That's how we tell who the real Mortis is. Mortis just can't do a backflip whenever he wants. <laughs> the way Bowman can. To assume that I don't dodge, I just go insubstantial. Ooh, Bowman, do not go insubstantial without practice. Bowman just gets yeeted into the mailbox. <laughs> yeah, no, Bowman, like, knows the, how every single part of his body functions. So just being in something different suddenly, it's just, I don't know. He's just not really used to it. I'll take the face plant on that one, apparently. Cool. Give me a time to save. <laughs> oh, real? Okay. Staggered. Oh, that's not bad. <laughs> no, you're okay. You don't get hurt. You just, you get embarrassed. <laughs> As you flip end over end and slam into the mailbox. <laughs> Welcome to and my world. Land in a goth heap. Goth heap. <laughs> Name of my next band. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he'll, he'll get back to his feet. Um, okay, this is all going to take some getting used to. Right, oh, bye. my throat hurts so much. <laughs> you could stop talking like that. Like talking like what? <laughs> <laughs> it's resident's job today. I'm not doing the voice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you do the voice. I don't know what voice you're all always talking about. <laughs> this is my voice. Um But you arrive at Nick's townhouse. You do see what Nick saw. The front door has been forced open. There are signs of struggle in the living room. Uh, the furniture has been tossed, thrown around. Wait, uh, we see what Nick saw? So we saw who kidnapped him? You see what... Yes! <laughs> <laughs> World's greatest detective! <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> With the proper time rituals, I'm sure we can see exactly what Nick saw. Yeah, probably. You probably could whip out a post-cognition ritual if you wanted to. Um, you see what Derek saw originally. It's not my fault Derek and Nick rhyme. What? <laughs> for, of course, we're that, we're that gay couple. Um, <laughs> it's like Big John and Little John in uh, Halloween this year. <laughs> um, so yeah, you see that the house has been tossed. You see that there are there were signs of a struggle, and you do not see Nick anywhere. Anybody okay. who wants to can make investigation checks. With the swapped roles? Um, or, are there, or our existing ones? I would say investigation would be with your existing minds. Wait, so Centuria we're rolling? Yeah, yep. Oh, this is going to be so good. Because it's brain stuff. Wayne. It's brain stuff. <laughs> Wayne 23. Stuff. I got a 16, which pretty much makes sense for century. You rolled intimidation, uh, Calvin. <laughs> they were really close to each other. He's intimidating that house to tell him what happened. Right. <laughs> Don't you, you make will... me come down there. <laughs> you will tell me your secrets. <laughs> you got some nice crown molding in here. Be ashamed of somebody having to it. <laughs> Just intimidating a carpet. Uh, <laughs> 23. For investigation. It's curtains for you, house. <laughs> um, 23 investigation, 16, 23. Looks like 23 is all around. So, Resonant and Bowman, as you're sort of poking around, you do see um, not necessarily more information than that, but you do see a couple of things that Derek missed. It looks like over um, at the base of the stairs that go up to the second level, there's a fine greenish purple powder on the ground um, that sort of clumps together like magic sand mm. which I think is a toy that people used to have it still exists yeah um, and it looks like whatever action happened in here happened very quickly somebody came in through the front door uh, smashed it from the outside in started smashing other things Nick came down to stop them and then was grabbed and it looks like only one individual left this space 
Hey, Mortis, do you recognize this? Um, walk on over and see what he's... Uh, Mortis, you don't even have to roll an expertise magic or expertise occult check. This appears to be ectoplasmic goo. It's residue that is sometimes left behind by ghosts who are affected with magic spells. <laughs> Usually containment spells. They hurt Nick. An attempt to bind him. Is with his ring on, is he still mostly ghost? Technically he could have taken the ring off to try to get away. Oh. because uh, that would have <laughs> So we have been gifted rings that allow him to have a corporal form without expending any energies. <clears throat> so but if he can take if he takes it off, he will become incorporal again. Okay. So, so that he could have he could have been in, in his cor more corporal state when they hurt him, or he could have been attempting to become insubstantial so that he could, you know, pass through the walls and get away. I didn't see the I don't see the ring, but whoever attacked him could have taken it too, even if he got it off. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe we should look for the ring, but. Okay, so at least we know that we know he was here and that they obviously did something to him, either in ghost form or not, so it really doesn't give us anything more to go on. Bowman, did you find anything? Uh, mostly the same. Again, I was wondering if you trace this powder to wherever more of it may be, or I mean trace the ring itself. I suppose if it's part of Nick, they should be able to put a tracking ritual together. I mean, it's the, uh, he holds, uh, Derek holds up saying, I've got the matching ring. There are engagement rings, actually. Oh, that would work. <clears throat> All right, so how do, how do we do this? Well, you usually put the connecting pieces that you're looking f to find. So in this case, Mortis's ring, you're trying to find its counterpart. You would put that in, in a magical circle. It would need to be empowered and you would need to state your intent. Okay, uh, let's do those things. Can we do it here, or does it have to be a... As good a place as any. And with that, I will reach out with my uh, spectral ghostly movement powers and, and basically poltergeist the area, so blast all the debris and stuff out of the way so we have an open fire space to, to look in. Excellent. Omen is going to make a note of whatever motions you may have done to do that. <laughs> All about the connection to the uh, emotions. <clears throat> Anger makes that one easy. We guardian get to know. Spiritosa. Um, and I will go get some ritual supplies and, and start drawing out the circle and all that stuff. Awesome. Uh, Mortis, go ahead and give me an expertise magic check. And anybody who wants to aid can also make an expertise magic check. Uh, I will attempt to do so. I will try my best. Well, do I have expertise magic? Because it's a brain thing. <coughs> Mortis's body does. You can make it, but you have to get a higher DC to contribute. I was going to say. I was going to say, anything that would be magically related would probably have to be the body-swapped person versus the person that knows how to do it. I mean, if talking about it from a standpoint of like how to perform, how to draw the magic to do the, to do the assist versus like Resonant can talk about how to cast a ritual mm -hmm. in, in, in Bowman's body, but 
she can't draw on the magic that yes. she would normally do to cast the ritual. Well, I think I've rolled a significantly low enough to account for the fact that I don't know what I'm doing with Resonance Power. <laughs> so it's 27. I mean, it's not it's terrible. Roll. But compared to her bonus, that's pretty crappy. Um, so... Oh, oh, gee, Mortis rolled a crud, so I'm going to spend the hero point to roll. Fair. Hero points. Don't forget I know you meant like the letters O G, but in my head you meant like O G Mortis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Original Ghost Mortis. <laughs> <laughs> oh golly, <clears throat> that's significantly better. I have a twenty-five on my roll. Excellent, and you do get a bonus from Resonant to give you a plus two, so twenty-seven for the total expertise magic check. Uh, Mortis, you successfully cast this spell. Uh, the information that you get is that the ring is currently in a cemetery in Lantern Hill. And go ahead and describe what the ritual looks like as you gain that information. So uh, Mortis is figure, uh, drawing the circle, ritual circle. Uh, he'll take his ring off, place it in the circle along with some of the residue that we found earlier. <clears throat> we'll light some candles and... Um, will actually grab Bowman and drag Bowman into the, the ritual with me so that I mean, you're stuck in you're stuck in a copy of my body you'll need to figure out how to do this agree <clears throat> uh, I'll follow your moves and so uh, as I as I do it uh, his eyes actually go all glo uh, all gray and you know, like almost like he's got cataracts where it does all that gray and washes all the color out as his soul sight kicks in and through his soul sight, he actually can see um, the, where the ring is and the cemetery around it. That's awesome. <laughs> and in map terms, I've moved us over to the Freedom City map. Oh. You guys are here, and the ring appears to be here. Uh, Not terribly <clears throat> far. We have a van. Ha! <laughs> yeah. You guys loading up uh, in the mortis machine? Uh, I I guess so. Um, is that necessary? I mean, well, I don't think I've seen your van before. But... I don't think Bowman has seen the van yet. Bowman wasn't here for those shenanigans. Oh, 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 the van, the van's awesome. Uh, so, uh, the ring's close by, and given the fact that Centuria is still learning how to, to maneuver with Overdrive's body, I don't think it'd be a great chance. I think we should, the van would be safer. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, I, I don't want to hurt your face again. Um, and, uh, yeah. So we'll go hop into the van. I have a 1970s van, which has got a big Celtic warrior being pulled on a sleigh by two wolves on, painted on the side of it. And the dragon you slayed from uh, in yep. Freedom, Freedom in uh, Trinity Tower. <laughs> That's on the other side of the van. When you were a high what? schooler. Yep. Oh. This is a pretty sweet van it's texting a picture to Jason and I was like now Bowman wants a bow van <laughs> no I only have one sidekick <laughs> for now yeah. um, unless anyone stops us I'm going to suggest we take the van and drive over to Lantern Hill um, given it's a cemetery on Lantern Hill it Lantern Jack may show up. Just be warned. He does like to do that. He's a little grumpy with us. Well, less grumpy with me. Oh, great. The whole undead rising up and flooding south side. Yeah. 
well, we dealt with that, so... That wasn't you. That was Sophie. No, no but... Yeah. Well, I tend to be around when these things occur, so... Yeah. So, you all load up in the van, you head across uh, the Cross Lantern Hill, rolling through the old brownstones, sort of the colonial era buildings, up and down over the hills. You come to the gates of the cemetery, which is sort of a strange historic cemetery that's been preserved in the neighborhood so there's a couple of other businesses around the around the cemetery gates uh, you see a couple of coffee shops there's a bank over across the way um and the gate of the cemetery itself as night is starting to set in here in freedom city the gate is closed uh, but the ring is more you can feel the ring is in front of the gate nearby Um, yeah, so um, I will head on over and try to uh, locate the ring. Yeah, you take a couple of steps over towards the gate, and you do see it on the ground, sort of, sort of just on the inside of the gate. Um, there is some more of that ectoplasmic dust near the entranceway of the cemetery, uh, but the ring appears to have been discarded here. I will take an investigation check from folks in the area. That's only a 15 this time for resonant. Let's investigate. That's a 29 for Bow Mortis. 29 for Bow Mortis. <laughs> Morto. Mortman. <laughs> Mort. <laughs> Um, so, uh, Bowman, with your 29, as you're taking a look around, you do notice some things that you usually deal with crime-wise. It looks like there is tire treads, uh, that sped away very quickly from the front of the cemetery, heading in the direction of, um, what road, road is that? State Route 6? Yeah, State Route 6. Okay. That way northeast of where you are okay um it looks like somebody did drop the ring here and loaded a loaded a motorcycle from what you could tell very quickly and <clears throat> took off uh from the cemetery like a bat out of hell so the tire treads are from a motorcycle yes okay um, uh, Bowman, you also notice that some of the businesses nearby do appear to have cameras that sort of look on the street and in this general direction. Uh, you can tell that there are, that nobody has disturbed the lock on the cemetery gate. But it looks like somebody was trying to, uh, looks like somebody may have tried to pull the gate open or closed. There's some discoloration in the metal on the gate from a couple of hands. Okay, so I'll relay that information. Um, the lock wasn't disturbed, so someone might have tried to pull the gate. There's tire treads heading northeast. Looks like it's from a motorcycle that someone loaded with something. And there's cameras nearby. Okay, so... Cameras means there's a record of what happened, maybe? Now you're thinking like a detective. Um, sorry. sorry, I just I've read too many crime novels lately. You're in one. Um, is there a particular camera that may be pointed this way? Uh, Bowman, as you're looking around, it looks like there's a coffee shop nearby uh, with the business name Good Morning. M O U R N I N G. Oh. Why? <laughs> Why yeah. Not? That seems in poor taste, but they have a camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see if they have any footage captured or anything on their system. Awesome. Uh, are you going over, Bo? Mortman? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
that was certainly my intention. Otis. Otis. Wow. Otisia. Um. So yeah, you head over to the coffee shop. It looks like they're closing down for the day. Um, it is around 9 p.m. at this point. Oh, there's still people there. There are still some people there. Well, this <laughs> would have been a lot easier if all we had to do was break in. <laughs> you see one guy that the uh, barista keeps coming over to, like, sort of subtly rush out of the store who's working on s probably a screenplay on his laptop on one of the tables. Um, I don't know. What is the rest of the team doing? Um, as Mortis heads, as Bowman heads over to the coffee shop, Resident kind of cocks his head at him and goes, Bowman, can't you just hack it from here? Well, I wasn't finished making my wrist computer yet, so probably not. <laughs> Uh, do I have it? No, I don't have a hack arrow. <laughs> yeah. the arrow. Jason has the hacking arrow. Jesus, too much. There's something I can go get for you really fast to make you be able to hack into it. Uh, okay. If you run to the quiver and you look where the armory the is, <laughs> you've been there. We were just there. <laughs> I think. Were we? Uh, yeah. An issue. Whatever. Whatever. Before we deal Please with the see issue. Stuff. <laughs> whatever, whatever. <laughs> okay, keep telling me then. Okay, so you go in there. Um, <laughs> you go to the armory. You'll see where all the arrows and the bolts are. There's a small green looking one. Go grab that. You've gone past the giant penny, you've gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> He says the small green one. Re uh, Resonant pulls his quiver off her back and starts looking at the arrows and goes, oh, they are color coordinated. <laughs> <laughs> Crap, uh, yeah. I was going to get him a label maker for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to run there then. Awesome. Uh, over Churia, you race over to the quiver. You run down into the base. You see Jason sitting at the computer eating a hot pocket. Hey, bud. Hey, Overdrive. Um, if you see Bowman, don't tell him I had another one of these. Maybe you should eat them all. Maybe I already did. <laughs> did she? Did she see? Oh, damn it, Jason. The green one. <laughs> Um, yeah, there is a green arrow nearby. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. If you squint real close, it looks like Bowman. <laughs> um, but I actually see it, right? Yes, you do see it. Yes. Okay, I'm going to pick up the green arrow and I'm going to look at uh, Jason. Jason? Oh, right. Jason, yep. I almost said Justin. I'm gonna look at Jason and be like, "Would this help Bowman hack into stuff?" I mean, that's what it's supposed to do. But he's not as good at it as I am. Great. And then she's gonna run. <laughs> she's gonna run back nice and ignore to what Jason just said. <laughs> <laughs> um. I don't think Bolt's sheet has his updated bolts, but uh, it's supposed to be rank 10, affects objects only, affliction controls, the third degree only. Awesome. I don't know if that's useful. That is useful. Um, so, Morturia, or sorry, <laughs> Overdrive, Overturia. Centuro Drive. Centuro Drive. <laughs> Um, you come racing up with the green arrow and you hand it to Mortis or Resonant? <laughs> Mortis. The one that whose name tag says Bowman. Oh. Mortis. <laughs> Mortis 2. <laughs> Electric Boogaloo. Your sidekick said he's better at this than you are. Better at what? <clears throat> hacking? 
<laughs> She'll just wave the arrow and be like this. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's probably right. Um, I want to make things more difficult here, so I'm probably going to. All right, well, the problem is you got to shoot it to activate it. So no one else can use it. I know what you're all thinking. <sighs> okay, how do I work this thing? Uh, okay, uh, you just got to get like your hands in the right position, and then it's just all in arm strength. Just you got to feel it. The president's <clears throat> like, man, look at my arms. <laughs> oh, <that's> also memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully my muscles have enough memory. <laughs> Yeah. Not enough RAM. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what would you like me to roll, Alex? Um, roll a ranged combat attack to hit the area. Okay, so I will roll... Peerless Shot feels appropriate. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I gotta find it. Hopefully it's there, and my sheet's not too much of a mess. There it is, I found it. While they're doing that, I'm going to actually attempt to go into the cemetery and Jack! <laughs> I got a 28 to put the arrow on the uh, on the incoming data signal for the internet. You hit the internet with your arrow. Um, and I Assuming will... that's where I needed Assuming that's where I needed to put it and not, you know, in the camera. Yeah, and you said it was ranked 10, Bowman? Uh, yes. All right, you have hacked the security cameras. Um, and Resonant, as you take the shot, it feels remarkably easy for your body to pull and shoot the bow. Well, this body's been doing it for years, so it knows what it's doing. There, you're a natural. Or you are, and I'm just borrowing it that too <laughs> if you decide you want to give it a try then I don't know after this we'll we can do that <laughs> I'm <Nice>. just offering <laughs> <Hashtag Not a>. <laughs> <laughs> oh everybody's taking turns using the body now okay <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to be nice um as the His hacking is developed. going on, Mortis, you go into the cemetery and you begin yelling for Jack. And sure enough, after a few moments of you disturbing the peace of the dead, the telltale <laughs> fog begins to wash into the cemetery. And you can see the pale green light of the lantern hoisted in the darkness coming your way. And Jack um, addresses you with narrowed eyes. I sense the presence of two soul vaults here. Yeah, magical shenanigans. You do not know the forces with which you tamper. I haven't cast a spell. I'm just telling the ramifications of it. Hmm. What can I do for you, Spectre? Earlier this evening, my home was broken into and Nick was abducted. This, and pulls up the ring, was found outside the gates to the cemetery. This was the ring that allowed him to assume corporeal form. Did you see or sense anything? I felt a great magical disturbance tonight. And he uh, he ex out stretches his hand to try and grab the ring from you. Oh, and as he takes it, he um, kind of holds it and closes his eyes, and you hear a deep sort of hum pass through him into the grounds of the cemetery. And the um, there's sort of a general rumble through the ground. And he opens his eyes with almost panic. And he gives it back to you very quickly. 
Nick has been taken by one who hunts our kind. Take this evil with you and depart immediately. knew where he was, I could sit still with this hunter. Was there anything you can tell me at all about who this person is? Only what I remember from my life before. Very little. His name is Adler. And he is the hammer of spirits and the hammer of witches. <clears throat> he is not to be trifled with. If he has come for your love, then your love is already gone. So, Alex, mm -hmm. can I make an occult villain's roll since I have that expertise? You sure can. Twenty-four on that roll. Uh, Mortis, you know that Adler is probably Eric Adler, otherwise known as Hexenhammer. Oh, not that guy again. Who is a is the vengeful spirit of an infamous witch hunter in colonial America, um, who was empowered by the church to. Be crusade against heresy, magic, and witchcraft throughout the colonies. Um, he died rather unexpectedly, but his spirit was bound by its righteous journey of vengeance in such a way that he has proceeded through time, finding new and exciting ways to kill ghosts throughout the ages. Uh, he's a skilled warrior, trained interrogator and fanatical fanatically devoted foe of all things magical and his spirit empowers and augments those he possesses making them stronger faster and more formidable than they were before awesome it's bad news I'll start making my way back to the team Oh, and he uses an indestructible magic hammer that has the ability to hurt spirits and destroy magic. Meanwhile, with the hacking, um, you all successfully hack into the city's surveillance network. You do find um, on the good morning coffee, ca coffee shop camera footage of the evening's events it looks like this may have happened uh two or three hours ago uh you do see a man who looks like this dressed sort of like a dramatic <clears throat> witch hunter i mean he, there's no other way to describe it he's wearing a large wide brim hat black puritanical clothes, high boots, um, lots of gold skull imagery, and he is wielding a massive hammer. He's carrying underneath his arms a black or a black steel box of some kind that is glowing with fell green magical energy. Um, as he's walking across the cemetery, you do see he's making his way towards a motorcycle. As he gets to the motorcycle, the box falls out from under his arms, it swings open, and Nick's spirit erupts out of it for a moment, grabs a hold of the cemetery gates before Hex and Hammer forces him back down into the ghost trap. Then he mounts the motorcycle and takes off before anybody can say anything otherwise. And I'll switch over to the Roll20 table so our friends at home can take a look at what uh, this fellow looks like. Hey, Mortis. This is what we found. The 
does this guy look familiar to you? Yes. He's a deranged witch hunter that hunts all ghosts and witches and vampires and other supernatural creatures. His name is Hexenhammer. Um, Alex, did the camera happen to get a the, the picture of the uh, the license plate on the? As a matter of fact, it did. Okay. Resin is going to look at Bowman. So if I take the plate and run it through the cameras, the rest of the city, we might be able to figure out where he went. That sounds like a good plan. Uh, Jason should be in the quiver still. He has access to the bow computer, which can do that. I have to talk to Jason? Yeah, I... <laughs> this might get a little confusing for him. I'll explain it to him later, just... You know, don't let him onto it just yet. Or else he'll be asking a bunch of questions and kind of get him to focus. Uh... Okay. Resident will uh, get on the comms. Jason, you there? Yeah, boss. I saw Overdrive uh, earlier. Did he mention anything to you? <laughs> just that you were better at hacking than I was. Okay, so he just told you the truth. Cool. What's up? I got a license plate I need you to track through the city find out where it went was started at the good morning coffee shop outside of lantern hill went north but i need to know if it went i need to know exactly where it went yeah i can run that uh no worries give me just a minute and uh, he'll take down the license plate hxn hmr 34 <laughs> uh... that's a custom license plate <laughs> it's very important to me that my license plate be hammer Actually, his license plate would probably Please. be like Psalm 34 or something like that. Uh. He's got a Jesus fish bumper sticker. <laughs> also with you. <laughs> God, I hate this guy. <laughs> Another villain yeah, that Jonesy you. gave me as a possible nemesis for Mortis. So... Anything that happens with him is Jonesy's fault, not mine. Uh-huh, sure. Yeah, okay. Um, Jason runs the plate. He kept, keeps track of the camera footage as it's moving in and around town. He says, well, he headed north. Looks like he took State Route 6, and he leaves the city. Uh, pretty quick, pretty, you know, pretty big hurry. Um, I don't, I sort of lose track of him that as he leaves the city, but State Route 6, that heads northwest of here, so uh, he could be heading to Mystery in New Hampshire, he could be heading to Faroburg, he could be heading oh, a couple of different places, I guess. Can we run the, the owner of the plates? Yeah, they, um, they seem because... to be registered to a Tobias Faulkner who is a Faroburg native. And it is a Pennsylvania license plate. Who is a... Hexen is a spirit who possesses people. Interesting. That makes more sense. So my Question. guess is that some poor sucker in Faroburg is currently uh, hosting Mr. Hammer. Okay. Well, then we know where we should head, right, Farrowberg? Yep, exactly. Yeah, and here's uh, Tobias's address, and he'll forward you a street address for Tobias. And it Good looks work. like he is a groundskeeper for the Mother of Mercy Cathedral. Mm. If you're looking for his job, too. Mm. Good work, Jason. You know, I'm trying to get a hold of this whole crime fighter thing. I think it's going okay. Oh. oh. Wait, did you say good job? Got 
Yes. <laughs> we gotta go. We gotta go. Hang up. <laughs> you okay, boss? <laughs> yeah. Just gotta go. Gotta figure this stuff out. Uh huh. Okay. Well, just let Bowman know I didn't need his hot pockets. Wait. <laughs> Click. <laughs> wow. Did, do you not tell him when he does a good job? I, I tell him. <clears throat> I've definitely told him. At least, I, I have. That time that we, he was on the building and he was helping people, it was from a distance, but I'm sure he heard me. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, no one wrote a book on how to have a sidekick, okay? Uh, no, but there are plenty of books out there about how to treat people. I'd just I like to point of... out, your grandpa probably did write a book about how to have a sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never read it. Don't you come from a long line of sidekicks? Yes. Uh, yeah, but he was, he was like the only Bowman except for the first one that didn't start as a sidekick. So, you know, he never got those... On field lessons. Never got that hands on training. Nope. Wait, were you a sidekick? No. Oh, okay. I was about to say, how would you like to be treated like you treat Jake? He wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, well, what are you guys doing? I think we need to head to Farrowburg. Head to this church. Seems a little too easy, right? Could be a trap, but it's our best lead. Uh, mm -hmm. Suppose we're taking the van. I would think so. I mean, unless the team, yeah. How far away is Farrowburg? Um, it is a couple of states over, so you're looking at like a six to seven hour drive. Okay, I feel like I should try to speed wake us there, hmm. but like, be careful about it. <laughs> Slow down gradually instead of just dull at once. Yeah. <laughs> that would be my preference, yes. Dave, how do you stop <laughs> without throwing everybody out of the wave? What? What? You you just you stop. You like you, you just, same way you stop in a car. You just sort of ease down and and you decelerate. That's it's not complicated. Okay. Yeah. Right. Go, team. Yeah, so speed break us. Yeah, do, do that thing. Why do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You just stop, you dummy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you are you taking the van with you in the speed break? Oh no. <laughs> that, Wait, what could they possibly go I guess wrong? I should ask, I should ask uh, Mortis if he wants me to take the van. We can leave the van. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to risk destroying his van without his permission. Stops quickly, gets everybody into a car crash. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Hey, no van then. No capes. All right, so you all uh, gather close around Overturia and race off towards Farrowburg, um, which takes much less time for overdrive's speed to reach. Wait, if it's it's six hours away? Uh, driving. 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 And that that camera was two or two three, to three hours. hours ago? Mm -hmm. So they wouldn't be there yet, right? Unless he had some magical means of accelerating his speed. And Jason did say that he took off really quickly. Okay. So. Never mind then. Let's just find this motorcycle and fuck him up on the way. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say maybe we should like run the way that you would drive. To okay. See if we well. See the motorcycle, but I don't know how the speed wake actually works. Like I don't know if I can look 
if he left three hours before us and we're running at a thousand miles per hour and it's two <laughs> states away, at what point will we catch up to the motorcycle? I always hated these questions on the map. Oh no. Train A. If train A left station. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't start with those train ones. D and D is just Skyrim <laughs> with math. <laughs> Skyrim is just Skyrim with math. You just don't see it. <laughs> awesome. So you guys rock it off uh, towards Faroberg, following the path of the highway between here and there. You all do not see this motorcycle anywhere between point A and point B. Just because Alice didn't want us to fight him on the highway. That's not true. I would love to. <laughs> there's a whole highway danger zone and everything. Mm -hmm. And or there's a highway, a highway there. <laughs> So you um, do come racing up Centuria as you're carrying everybody with you. Um, I think it only takes you like 30 seconds or something to get there. From the massive speed that you can do. So as you arrive, um, night has fallen. You do come racing down the highway. You come into a tunnel that goes underneath a couple of mountains. And you come out in the basin of a, this ring of mountains and you're looking down you do see this industrial city sort of intercut with two rivers that come up around it and form out into a wider river that leads west of where you are um even from here in the dark you can see in the street light in the street glow of the street lamps some of the um, some of the river water does seem to reflect with gasoline that is and gasoline and oil that is mixed with the river water there's industrial sludge sort of everywhere and this general sense of smog and pollution um it even sort of dims the street lamps from where you're coming out sheesh um there is a massive row of skyscrapers down in the center of everything but most of this is an industrial town that time seems to have forgotten there's steel factories coal plants boats coming up and down the river very slowly and not a lot much else from what you can see up here you have come to Faroberg. jonesy's old stomping grounds when he was a villain anti home sweet home and the german yeah. yeah. <clears throat> we had that we have that address of that church we should probably head there right Seems like the kind of place Hex and Hammer would go to. I would think so. Okay. Here we go. Cool. You guys head down to Mother's Mercy Cathedral, um, which is in downtown Faroberg, sort of at the base of two massive skyscrapers. That's this relatively new brick concrete structure with a large angled spire and stained glass all the way around uh, it does look like you have come upon evening mass so there are people inside you can hear the music of the choir spilling out into the streets and you do see there is this very flamboyant uh, bishop overseeing mass from where you can where, from where you're standing uh, he's going through the communion sacrament at this point Try not to attract any attention and just find that motorcycle if it's here. He, he said are free. stealthily. He said stealthily. <laughs> um, can I like scout around? Yeah. See, see if I find the motorcycle. Go ahead and give me a speed check. Oh god. Which is just a D twenty plus eighteen, because that's not built into overdrive sheet. Eighteen, so that's twenty-nine. Yes. 29. Yes. So with a twenty-nine overdrive is your centuria as you're racing around uh Faroberg, you do get a general sense of the layout of the land you go. You can tell where the neighborhoods sort of begin and end as you're racing through. You do not see any sign of this motorcycle anywhere, however. I don't see it, guys. Okay, what about the groundskeeper's home address? You can check there as well. Okay. 
I don't know. I'm not sure where else we can look. <laughs> if it's not here, it's got to be somewhere else. I think we should enter into a skill challenge now where you all, unless somebody is going to go into the church and talk to the bishop <laughs> or cause a scene. No. You're making a scene! Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't it's, not know resonant. Do that. it's not resonance plan. Cool. Don't want to really get noticed, right? No, have no idea what Hex and Hammer may have done. So. Cool. So we will go into a skill challenge. Um, so you, most of you are at the cathedral right now. Overdrive, or Centuria is racing around town, <laughs> checking it down for different locations. Um, so I'll get to over Centuria Drive in a minute. Over Centuria Drive. My brain hurts. <laughs> for real. This is all you're doing. Get it, again. This is my fault. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I'm going to start with Kevin. What are you looking to do? To start trying to track down the location of Hex and Hammer or Nick or what happened? Um, if I'm understanding this, like magic sensing because he is a mystical being mm -hmm. but i'm not i don't know how to read this sheet like i'm not does that just make use of perception yep that would just be a perception check but you have an extra special sense okay yep so it's accurate and acute okay so i'm a little distracted by emotion reading because i just kind of look at whatever body uh resonance in right now like oh my god you feel this all the time it's <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna all try the, and concentrate. All of the emotions we feel all the time, resonant. Uh, ah, how do you not drink? Uh, okay, so I will attempt to sense hex and hammer, and my dice rolls are certainly reflecting my understanding of resonance power. So that's a whopping twenty-one, which isn't awful until you realize how good she is at this. Mm. So with the whopping 21, as you're sort of getting a feel for the magic of the universe, you actually have a bit of an you have a bit of a out of body experience for a moment as the the magic of Ferroberg is very overwhelming to you. You are accurate so you do get the sense of what you're trying to reach out and feel, but there is Something is messing with the energy of this place. You can tell based on how you felt the wellspring out of whack before. Something is overloading this city with spectral energy. Um, you recognize it as spectral subconsciously because Resonant recognizes it as such. But the whole city seems to be overwhelmed with ghostly energy. It's uh, sort of making will... it hard to sense where Hex and Hammer is exactly. I will alarmingly sort of pass it on to everyone. Like, uh, guys, I, I, I don't know if you like getting bad vibes out of this place like I am, but there's like this overwhelming spectral energy here, and I, I'm not getting, I'm not getting a read on Hex and Hammer, but there's something, something funky in Ferroberg right now. Awesome. And who wants to skill challenge next? I could do some investigating on maybe the crowd around here, or like if, I, if the guy isn't here, is there anything? If there's anything I can pick up on the people that are here or this area? Sure. You're just looking I, to investigate the church grounds. Yeah, I don't know. This feels like a good point of contact between the two. Um, I do want to do so like stealthily or unnoticedly. <laughs> Hmm. Inconspicuously. Hey, that's a good one. Unnoticedly. <laughs> Unnoticedly. Yeah, I know. That's what I meant. <laughs> uh, but yeah, invest uh, investigation. Ooh, 27. Awesome. So as you're sort of... Are you skulking around looking for clues? Um... <laughs> I mean... I don't think 
Bowman knows how to do intangibility yet. He might try it. Um, actually, no, well, intangible is it invisible? Can Mortis go invisible? Is that a thing? No. no? no. <laughs> then he will try to be as stealthy as he can using his uh, <laughs> good old stealth methods. Bowman turns intangible and just falls into the core of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crack on the floor. <laughs> ah! um, <laughs> what was your total again, Calvin? I'm sorry. Uh, 27. 27. So with the 27... As you're investigating around that, is a success for the skill challenge. Um, and you're looking for a sense of the people frequenting this area? or the yeah, If we the can't church? find the guy here, then if there's anything up with this area or the people in it, uh, just because well, I feel suspicious of this area. Um, as you're looking around, you do notice a couple of things. You do notice that the grounds have not been maintained in what looks like a week. It looks like the grass is a little taller than you would expect a well-manicured church lawn to be. Uh, there are some weeds growing in a couple of the flower beds. And it looks like... It, it looks like the general the cemetery and the yard around the church has not been maintained recently. Um, the people inside, they sort of range from <clears throat> very wealthy, sitting in the front of the church, to general run-of-the-mill people as they go towards the back. Um, the bishop, you notice, is very, very well to do. Um, his cassock appears to be appears to be inlaid with uh, gems and gold. Um, he's wearing a lot of jewelry, especially for a service, and a lot of the tools he's using are are seemingly high high value. Um, you do notice that a couple of the choir boys, or the altar boys near him, um, are very off put by him. Mm. Uh, do I pick up on the bishop's name whilst investigating? Yes. His name is Father Mario. <laughs> Bishop Mario. Bishop Mario. It's a me, Bishop Mario. <laughs> wow. Watch out for the red turtle show. Oh. <laughs> when he's finished his sermon, he just jumps down a pipe. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Definitely getting all those points. Uh, and that's sort of the general gist that you get from around. Oh, is it actually Bishop Mario? It is actually Bishop Mario. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought you, you were. Uh, I thought you were joking. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I will relay that information, uh, mentioning that it seems like it seems like the groundskeeper hasn't been working here for about a week, which is probably when he got possessed. Uh, additionally, uh, this Bishop Mario is he? Familiar to you, Mortis? Do you recognize the name at all? I don't know. Um... Wait, it's a bishop? Isn't it a little weird that a bishop's doing the service instead of the priest? A dollar twenty-five bishop. Sorry. It's only weird if he's not doing it diagonally. <laughs> <laughs> Just jokes. <laughs> Oh, we've um, jumped the shark. Uh, I, uh... Oh, no. Uh, Alex, I do have uh, local expertise, Fruberg, and I also have Fruberg villains. I don't know if either of those would be appropriate for to know um, anything about Bishop Mario. Go ahead and roll a uh, Fruberg local knowledge. Uh, that'd be a 26. Awesome. With a 26, you are familiar with Bishop Mario. Um, he was not Bishop when you lived around here, but he has sort of had a meteoric rise through the ranks of the church. Um, seemingly off of the back of a large number of donations that he's brought in and a number of charitable events that have some some sketchy underpinnings for what you in your in your research have picked up 
um, you think his appointment to the bishopness of this diocese was uh, mostly one of almost like you bought it from from the peop from the overseeing the overseeing church people cardinals cardinals <laughs> I didn't <laughs> I'm Nep practicing Catholic. <laughs> ne ne nepotism for the win. Yes. I'm practicing right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, he has a reputation in the community for very bombastic, fiery sermons. Uh, but he's not known to do, you know, he's not known as like a leader of a hate group or anything like that. He's Fiery's somebody that fire. your stepfather does not enjoy very much fires and fire and brimstone type of thing yeah a little bit of fire and brimstone and very mm. sort of high energy high octane sermons at least as much as a catholic sermon ceremony can be bombastic since catholics don't have rock bands and stuff like at the weird protestant churches yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, well, Resident was going to kind of try to go check out, like, if there's anything on the ground, like a shed or something, where the tools for keeping the grounds nice and neat would be, um, mm -hmm. and see if she couldn't get in there to see if anything had happened, like if that's the place where he was possessed. <clears throat> Sure. So, what would you like there? Give me an investigation check. All right, so I can do that under my resonant. Yep, as you're sort of poking around in there. I will go ahead and spend a hero point. Reroll that. Oh. Huh. It is a 23. It was previously a 12. Awesome. Well, 23. As you're poking around in the general area of the groundskeeper's shed, um, you do see you do see signs of things that are a little bit off. You do see that the lock looks like it has been recently replaced um, with a nice hardy steel lock. Um, Which Bowman's lock, Picaro, takes care of handily. Yes. <laughs> It's just normal lockpicks, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lockpick on a stick. <laughs> little tiny, they're shaped like little arrows. <laughs> um, you pick the lock, you get inside. Uh, inside, it looks like there was a scene in here. Um, a lot of the stuff has been thrown about. A lot of the tools are missing in here. A lot of the furniture has been smashed, and there is a ring of silver um, powder on the ground. Does that tick off anything in Resonant's memory about magic? Um, Resonant is pretty sure that that silver ring is related to summoning magic. Okay. Hey, guys, I think I found the summoning circle in the tool shed. In the tool shed? Yeah, this place is kind of a mess. Yeah. No ways, no one. And Centuria, can you give me a either another speed check or an investigation check as you're searching Tobias's home address? Oh, cat, your audio is not coming through. There it goes. Nope, oh, barely. Mm -mm. Like I can, it's there, but it's not. Like you're, three hundred feet away. Hmm. Can you hear me? Hmm. Hmm. Not Nope. Microphone cooperate. Um, 
Looks like speed check. Yep, that's a speed check of twenty seven. Which is a success. Um Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yes. There we go. And Overturia, as you're racing by Tobias's house, you do see that it appears to be in a sort of run-down apartment building on the east side of Faroburg. Um, there's a number of boarded-up windows. There are a couple of real sort of crappy-looking cars out on the street. There's a number of a um, couple of people behind the building that seem to be standing around a trash can fire, keeping warm. Uh, as you race up to his exact address. Um, you do see that the door has an eviction notice on it. And there's police tape on <coughs> uh, sealing it shut. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, good. Um, I, okay. Can I look around a little bit more? Mm-hmm. Yeah, are you going to try to tear? Are you going to tear the police tape, or are you going to find another way into the building or into the room? Do I have to tear the police tape? So it is on the door in such a way that if somebody opens the door, the police know that somebody came in and left. Mm, I'll look for another way in. Okay. Yeah, you could run down and run into a window. <laughs> yeah. Are any of the windows unlocked? Um, it looks like a couple of them are. Okay, I will go in that way then. Awesome. So you speed run down the wall, you speed run up the wall, hold on for a second, lift up the window and rush in. Uh, and you find that this place is an absolute shithole. Um, <laughs> it smells very heavily of rot and decay. As you're looking around, there are a couple of Hanging from the roof, there's a number of animals that have been drained of their blood, uh, ritually, sacrificially, um, but their corpses have been left rotting on the roof. There's a number of different books about the occult that line one bookshelf on the far wall. There's stagnant water in the sink. Um, and everything's just sort of covered in a general layer of grime and dust. Um, you do see as you're making your way through into the bedroom, there are a number of hand-drawn images that have been plastered on the wall, sort of like wallpaper, of uh, black circles, of black birds, of strange geometric shapes. Uh, you do see a couple of black hammers that have been drawn on, and you see what you think looks like an image of the soul vault um, spread around the room. So there's five points where the images sort of intersect and there's a line that crosses through and you think that the bed is the center of the soul vault he's drawn on the walls and on the floor. Okay. Um, the first thing I want to do is, so it's like legitimately, like it looks like he could be using this as some sort of ritual thing. Could be. Or okay, it could be I something that he's recording from his memories or something like that. It's a little hard to tell. Okay. I want to interrupt the line, then, just to be safe. Okay. Whether that's, like, me, like, scratching them out with something or what. I don't know. Um, and then I want to scour the house and look for anything that seems like it's, like, recently been used or, like, I don't know. Not necessarily cleaner than the rest of it, but like, I don't know, like well used, I guess. I don't know. Okay. Um, you don't see anything that looks like it's well used, but you do, you do notice that there is a displacement in the mess. Um, it looks like somebody has taken something off of a desk that is computer sized, and and taken it out of here within the last week. But nothing else seems to have been disturbed in the last week. Okay, um, then I will, after doing all that, I will leave and head back to the group. Cool. And you all bring your information together at the church. Or wherever you guys want to meet up. In the van. In the van. Which we didn't bring. 
in free in oh, free Frigo City. <laughs> I mean, it's only thirty seconds. That's a long only thirty walk. seconds. <laughs> Um, as we reconvene the group, I think that might be a good place to go ahead and take a break. I think so. Awesome. So we will go ahead and stretch our legs, refill our water glasses, and we will see you all in just a couple of minutes. Woohoo!